ignoring this rock and roll stuff anymore. Every hotel and club in the country is wiring for information. Hello, Groove Dogs. Welcome to the Runaway Radio Rewind, a program that looks and listens back to the heyday of one of America's truly great radio stations, the legendary and late KLOL. It's the Runaway Radio Rewind. And now, here's your host, Steve Robinson. Thanks for joining us. This is a little memento of the way radio was done back in the day. And uh, it was done very well. Today on The Rewind, we hear from Brian Shannon. You may know him as Eddie the Boner Sanchez on the Steven Pruitt Show. We have a classic S&P bit called Pork a Dork. And you're getting yet another Uncle Waldo favorite. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure and check out RunawayRadioRewind.com. See all that it has to offer. Let's get rolling now with Brian Shannon. Um, It came about as a complete accident. We moved to Houston in 1986. Pat Fant brought us down from Dallas. Martha Martinez, myself, Mark and Jim. The whole Stevens and Pruitt show. And Jim Pruitt had this idea of writing bits on based on the old This Is Your Life 50s and 60s show that was always on um, as a way of introducing ourselves in a comedic and fun way to the audience. So we came around and it was time to do Martha Martinez, This Is Your Life. And so he had written this whole um, section of that where she, her long lost boyfriend, because she grew up in San Antonio from Lee Trevino High School in San Antonio, <laughs> was going to be on the show. And his name was Eddie the Boner Sanchez. And he was called Boner because he was a trombone player in in the high school band. Wink, 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 and all that. So we do the the bit. um, And it it starts rolling. It's all ad-lib. We we blocked out everything. We never scripted anything except the Uncle Waldo. Everything else was ad-lib and and off the top and off the cuff. So we start off the bit and we're going through, and I started doing the voice and I came on, hey, Martha, do you remember me? You know, about that. And she's playing along and it went over really well and we generated a whole lot of funny. I think the bit was supposed to be two, two and a half minutes because at that time we're still playing 12, you know, 12 minutes of commercials and 10 records an hour. And I think it went about seven minutes, but it was all hilarious. Well, that was it. And we moved on to the next thing. And later in the show, the next day, two or three days later, a week later, we would get random phone calls on the request line. And they go, hey, where's that boner guy? And when they would do that, I'd just, you know, hey, I'm over here. How you doing, man? And, and, go to, and it just snowballed. And it snowballed. And then I started throwing in on regular bits. And son of a gun, he became my bread and butter and and a way for me to be on the show um, with a completely different voice and different personality you know Jimmy had that unique voice Mark had you know good baritone voice and then Martha so it was unique and it was a way to contribute and uh, it just took off but it was purely by accident so before you were um, back at KLOL there was no Eddie Butler Sanchez Correct, like when you were in Dallas at the Eagle and and in those days of the of the show. Yeah, when uh, I originally got with Mark and Jim was at Dallas at KEGL, the Eagle. Um, I was working overnights; they were working the mornings, and I would get off at six. They'd come on. I dug them. I dug them hard. So I would sit and I would write for them. I'd do fake phone calls and character voices on phone calls, things of that nature. But I never did boner. Um, that was strictly a KLOL thing. Um, I was. Uh, just Brian, they call me Brian Paraquat Shannon because that was the early 80s and the Paraquat scare. And we all had the 80s, you know, hair, and I had still had this beard, but no gray, you know, and hair down to here and ear, earring, loop earrings in each ear and all that stuff. So all that fit. But they gave me a megaphone. And they gave me a megaphone to mimic the TV version of the producer. So when they would talk to me, I'd do it off camera like this and it gave that megaphone sound and it sounded like the intercom that you would see on television or a movie where the producer in another booth was talking to them so that was the shtick and the and the I hate to say gimmick but it was you know of my character being on the show there and at KLOL for a while I did both of that after Boner took off I would do both 
Ding a turkey. Ding a turkey. Leave her in. Ding a turkey. Good setup, Your Honor. <laughs> How do you explain that record? Well, Judge, it's this way. Yeah? It just took me a while to figure out what I was good at. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wish I was. Uh, a turkey. Besides, there's a new law. You can't cut one unless you say Moby. No. No, I was That's just going to. What were you going to do, Bonus? I was just going to say the wrecker left its lights on. The law Oh, okay. The record driver try. left his lights on. The record on. driver left his lights on. Uh, I'll be right back. Excuse me. Oh, there, there's, yeah. They're blowing that one, Boner. Hey, 23 minutes. <laughs> we'll be right back with the drop a top competition. <laughs> but uh, Boner just became so full-time that, the, t- unfortunately, the real me kind of got pushed to the side. <laughs> That's weird to say, but it's the truth. Um, can you remember the... Biggest celebrity that you and the boys may have rubbed the wrong way? It's okay if you don't. But no, I do. I'm trying to figure out what I would call the biggest. <laughs> um, we were broadcasting live in London. At Bill Wyman, the bass player for Rolling Stones, Bill Wyman's Sticky Fingers, which was basically his version of a hard rock cafe. The entire restaurant is you know gold gold top les paul's you know and memorabilia from the stones and all that and they put together um we had a london producer put together all these old you know rock stars and they came through and we did it did the show for whatever reason uh regis philbin and kathy lee gifford were in town and they brought them over and it was at the time where the announcement had come out that frank gifford had had the affairs so Kathy Lee Gifford lasted about three minutes before she stormed off because, you know, Mark and Jim are on her. I'm like, oh, what about Frank? You know, I, you know, um, stormed off. But Regis stayed and we were talking and cutting up and laughing with him. And then she got so mad at Regis because that's her partner on live with Regis and Kathy Lee. And he wasn't leaving. And she, it was like a mother trying to come get a precocious child by the ear and say, we're out of here. And he didn't want to go. So that's one of the ones that I remember that, I mean, it didn't take long and, and her personality didn't fit our show to begin with. So <laughs> that's not a surprise. I wouldn't think. Um, I'm trying to think if there, he was like, he was like, I'm here having fun, and I like these yeah, guys. Yeah, oh, absolutely. These guys are great. You just go over there and do San Diego. I'll stay here. <laughs> um, uh, we'd, um, God, I can't remember her name. The uh, the girl on Saturday Night Live that did Pat. Oh, uh, what was her name? That's, how, that's how, how great of a star she actually was. We can't remember her now. But she she did the whole, you're just misogynistic, mean people. You know, and all that, and within 30 seconds of her being in the studio, she was done, and she was toast. More from Brian Shannon in a bit, a.k.a. Eddie the Boner Sanchez. But now it's a game show on Stevens and Pruitt that you probably would never hear anywhere else. It's pork dork on the Runaway Radio Rewind. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> hey, thanks for bringing that machine by, man. It's monster. Let's get the pork dork Hi. Hello. What's your name? Uh, Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. So how long ago was it since you've last had, In, since you've visited since the you've last... Harbor of Hope? <laughs> since you've... I guess it's uh, about two days ago, but, you know, it, it used to be real good. Now it's kind of... kind of. Wait a minute. Uh, you just had it two days ago two and you're days? complaining to us? Yeah. How do you get... When was the last time before that? Uh... About a week. So o- over a space of a month. How many times a month? What, what do you say? Four times? Five times? Uh, maybe three times. Maybe. Ah, well, oh, you're well, just you... the guy we're looking for. We can help you. Now, has uh, your wife offered any reasonable excuse? No, not really. Well, what do you mean? What did, when you approach her, do you approach her? Yeah, she's kind of just... Uh, what, does she have the headache thing? The moon's well, not in the right just, phase? Well, what are some of the excuses? Rigid. She's moody. You know, one time she's, she's hot as a firecracker, the next time she's she's like... But mood swings, okay, we understand. Mood swings, that, but most right? of the time she's bloated. Right. Okay, bloated. <laughs> kind of puffy. Yeah. There you go. She still says, I feel puffy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I've just eaten and... Uh, Get off me, I, I'm swelling. Yeah. She looks yeah. like the Michelin man. <laughs> no. Go away, I'm turgid. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on, we'll make the call. Thank Minutes ago, much. Chuck complained that his wife, Sean, 
had cut him back to three times a month. Three times a month. Wow. So we're, we're going to call Mrs. Chuck and try to improve the relationship on the new Stevens and Pruitt feature, Porkador. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Wait, um, wait. We can't wait, call. Wait, who is this on the phone? We can't call. call. Somebody's, Somebody's got the line blocked. Who is this? Who is this? Hello? 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 Who is this? This is Bob. Who is this? <laughs> this is Stevens and Pruitt. Who are you calling? Uh, listen, I'm getting sick and tired of listening to these whiny men on your show this morning complaining about not getting any. Well, I mean, you know, it's... it's well, it happens in every relationship yeah, yeah. sooner or later. I mean, Why, are you getting all you need? Oh, uh, no way. I'm about as desperate as it can be. What do you... I, I haven't had any in two years. Two years? Wow! She hasn't given you any in two years? It's true. That's tragic, man. I've had to resort to really dire, uh, arrangements, if you will. You, you, dire arrangements, you I understand. Resorted to what, sir? Well... Like yesterday, yeah. on the way to work, yeah. I was arrested. arrested. Arrested for what? A new Well, the officer called it a new form of carjacking. <laughs> really? Oh. You know, you're right. Wow. That is well, tragic. You know what? Wow. Wow. In honor of West Texas and the rodeo, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing it with a rosin glove on. Get, Get out of here, you sicko. For well, eight seconds, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to try to call uh, Mrs. Chuck here and try to improve. Yeah, it's just a nice thing that we do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Chuck's not getting any. Three yeah. times a month. And there could be, other than the reasons he listed, you know, moodiness and... Uh, bloating. Bloating, <laughs> puffiness. <laughs> Moon phase. There might be other reasons. High tide. Yeah, sad poor guy. Tale. We got to call his wife right now. What's her name, Sean? Yeah. Sean, yeah, I got it Sean right here. on the line Speaking here. Speaking of sad Somebody. tales. Yeah. Hey, we're going to do this. If you're a woman that's not getting any, you call us. We'll help you, too. As soon as we get the title for it. Hi. Uh, Sean? Yeah. How you doing? Just fine. Good morning. Do you know who this is? No. It's the radio gods, Steve. Boner, please. It's Mark and Jim. You know, Stevens and Pruitt on 101 Kalo Yes. Yeah. How are you? You've heard of us. Yes. Yeah. You yes, know, what? we feature a number of public service programs on uh, this show. Excuse me, are you listening to the radio this morning? No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, you don't mind if we talk to you on the radio, do you? That's okay. Well, yeah, it might mean some nice prizes for you, okay? Okay. We were just talking to Chuck. You know Chuck? Yes. Chuck is your husband. How many years? Oh, don't let me start counting. Nine. Nine years. How many children do you have? Two. Two children. And you love them very much, don't you? Yes. And you, you love Chuck a lot, don't you? Yes, I do. Then why are you only putting out three times a month? <laughs> Excuse me, I... I lost it there. Well, what, this is a new feature we have the designed to help husbands who are not getting enough get more. <laughs> Yeah, we called it pork and dork, but when we talked to Chuck, we we changed it to do a dipshit. Hey, Boner! So, uh... So we're calling he you... that he's getting about, you know... Three times a month. No, it's not quite right. Well, well how well, many times... What is right, then? This should be interesting. He may be woman. lying to us. Yeah. He is. So how often a month is he getting it? A month? Uh, yeah, a month. Probably about at least four times a week. You're talking oh, twelve. Well, four Lord. times a week. Get that. Hold on, on just a, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a minute. How do I conference that? Do Hold on a minute, it's, Sean. Just a second. On four. Hey, Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Your wife is on the other line. She says you get it four times a week. <laughs> Isn't that right, Sean? Yes, that is. Do what? He, he says. <laughs> now he it's, says you're. It's you're, the quality lately. Oh. Now it's the quality. It's quality. You complaint there either. <laughs> what did you say, Sean? I don't think you should have a complaint there either. <laughs> so you've been giving him good quality? Yes. Hey, 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 Chuck, let me tell you something. I had her, and she's great. Is she? <laughs> hey, she wrote me a thank you card. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you she's a she, bastard. And, I mean, he's just... He's, he's a glutton. Us. You're trying to strain our taters. <laughs> Hey, it's Steve Robison. You're listening to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Uncle Waldo coming up, but first, here's more with Brian Shannon. One of the many criticisms that the show got is that it was misogynistic and it was, uh, you know, not uh, exactly friendly to the gay and lesbian community. What were the guys like? Uh, were the were the guys like that off air? Or was it just an equal opportunity uh, offensive uh, show when it came to hurling barbs? The motto that Mark and Jim said every time anybody brought up this subject is, the show's motto is humor for all, malice toward none. Off the air, Mark was very quiet, into fashion, all that stuff. Jimmy was Jimmy, but off the air they didn't do you know, things like that. It was just all for comedy. It was all for, in and those times, I mean, we're talking about the early 
80s through mid late 90s you know it wasn't quite as pc as it is now we still ruffled some feathers but you know there was still a, a still a lot of it you know now they they bleep out um i want my mtv dire straits the little <laughs> with the makeup you know you know and all this stuff but that was a perfectly acceptable word back then so we were just using stereotypes and stuff to just for the humor base not not to hurt anybody's feelings do you remember what the boys and you got called on the carpet for the most seriously like was there a thing that got you in the most trouble Yes, and it ties in with the most outrageous thing that ever happened in the studio, as a matter of fact. There was, as we used to do quite a bit of appearances in the gentlemen's clubs, and there was a, a lady that came to one of the ones up on I-45 North that was, clothing is not an option, it was one of the all-nude places, and her shtick was that she could squirt water from a particular place on her body. And she decided to bring her apparatus to the studio and demonstrate. So she had this what looked like an oversized plexiglass champagne glass back in the day with water in it. And she would hover and lower herself into it for a few seconds. And then she would pull back. She We had um, tarp and plastic draped on the walls. And she would lean back and lo and behold... Old Faithful <laughs> went, she, she's true to her word. She flew water out of that particular area. And uh, nobody was happy about that. That was, that was the time we got one of the memos that I kept from that era from the engineering department saying they weren't cleaning it up. And in fact, they considered the entire studio now a biohazard. <laughs> so we got to get out the uh, Clorox and, and a few of the uh, paper towels and write some some uh, we're sorry notes. Was that one of the things that got you in trouble with the FCC? That one, surprisingly, was not an FCC problem. The FCC problem. Um, the first fine we ever had, none of us really remembered saying what we were accused of saying. And the accusation was somewhere in the show, we somebody talked about, taking a piece of chocolate and inserting it at a certain place and then eating it. Now, granted, you're sitting there probably thinking, this was a comedy show? <laughs> but it, but the way we put it was, but we don't remember that. And they never could pre present any tape on that. They just said they had it. So that cost us 25 grand. Mm. That could, you know, the station, not us, but the station paid it. But you know what? At the time that that happened, uh, it was a $25,000 fine nice chunk of change but we were charging a thousand dollars a minute for commercials so it wasn't it didn't take long to make that back and you know the ratings were what kept us around and what kept everything flowing were there um early uh, one of the things i remember about the show is that there were uh, a lot of the endorsement type commercials and there were a lot of the um uh, clients that seemed extremely uh, friendly to the show that they were big supporters yes do you remember a few that were like the biggest supporters of the show that were you know that you know rallied to your defense when you got in trouble and things like that rocky mccullough for goods and honda was a long time big fan of the show we had him out as a celebrity judge for all the miss rockwear contests and things of that nature he was he was a friend and he was a major uh client he always rallied around the guys that owned the laugh stop over on Gray, the old Laugh Stop, um, and all of our comedian friends that would come through that played that club, they always rallied around. Mattress Mac. I mean, you know, Mattress Mac buys everybody, but he was a big supporter, and he was always there to help us out if we ever needed anything. And there was like uh, smaller companies like Constant Communications, one of the early telephone and, yes, beeper <laughs> companies, and things of that nature, auto insurance discounters. You know, was with us for years. I.W. Marks, Irv, was a great guy. Um, and he always came to our defense because he got our politically incorrect humor and was that way in person. Big teddy bear of a guy and would help everybody, anybody spending time in Houston knows, but uh, big supporters. Um, talk about being politically incorrect. If the guys were still around and the show were on the air somewhere today, how much different do you think it would have to be 
based on the times that we find ourselves in today versus uh, the 80s and, and early to mid 90s? I don't think the show would last 15 minutes. I, do, I just don't think the tolerance is there. And the other reason I say that is I don't think Mark and Jim would want to do a show that way. They never wanted to feel contained or cornered. And, uh, you know, Pat Fant, our general manager, you know, butted heads with Mark and Jim quite a bit on some of the things. But I, if they weren't into it and they didn't feel like it was the show that they wanted to do, I don't think they'd do it. I don't think they'd want to be on the air and they wouldn't be on the air. Does it surprise you now when you hear some of these old bits? Do you, do you kind of listen and go, I can't believe we did that. Yeah, there, there, there are definitely, there are definitely few. The woman with the plexiglass <laughs> champagne <laughs> that comes to mind. But yeah, there, there, there's a few. You know, we did uh, um, it was a rate of date. You know, and some people still now do like second date update and all that. But rate of date, it was a lot more down and dirty on what we were rating and things of that nature. So yeah, I, those types of bits. We can't leave you today without a classic from the vault. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Uncle Waldo. The Stevens and Blue ready for drive time players starring in Uncle Waldo, teenage beaver type person. In Act One, Scene One, our story begins in the room of Big Bruno and his younger brother, Uncle Waldo the Beaver. It seems that the loud noises coming from their parents' room are making it real hard for the kiddos to sleep. Let's join the Beave and Big Bruno in the room. Mm, Uncle Waldo, what's on the TV here? Turn it up real loud. Uh, next door, Mom and Dad are making a lot of noise there. Look, there's Josh from the right at 27. Yeah, hey. Golly, Beave. <laughs> Look at, wait a minute. Now stay in your own bed, Big. Okay, but uh, do you hear what I hear next door? That's Mom and Dad. What do you think's going on over there? Yeah, that's, that's Mom. I hear Mom. And... That's certainly Dad, yeah. I can hear Dad, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Golly, Beef, what do you think's going on? Hey, I got a great idea. Well, why is it? Why don't you go next door, Beef, and... You know, peek through the door and see what they're doing in there, huh? Okay, I'll go down. All right. The beeve stalks quietly down the hall to the room of the parents. Once there, he takes a look and then returns to his room. Hey, beeve, beeve, what was going on next door with mom and dad? What were they doing? What were they doing, huh? Uh, what were they doing, huh? It's really unfair, big. It's unfair. Yeah, Mama always slaps my hand when I suck my thumb. You've been listening to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Join us next week for more memories and goodness for the intelligentsia from the people who made the former KLOL what it was. Find us online at runawayradiorewind.com and be sure to grab your Runaway Radio gear. You can find the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Show us your dog, and we'll see you next week on the Runaway Radio Rewind.